UNLV with the first offensive possession. This is Kevin Kruger at the point. Kruger, of course, the son of the coach, Lon Kruger. And we head the other way, Len, as we get set, taking a look at the keys of the contest. Well, UNLV, usually even on the boards in their rebound margin, they've got to find a way to get to the long defensive rebounds from the long shots that Oregon will possibly take. And Oregon certainly want to keep the lanes wide with their guys, Porter and Brooks, off the bounce. They don't have a peer in the nation if they can get the space in the driving room. Shot. Harrison tapped back in by Marty Lunen. Well, again, that was a short rebound that UNLV did not get. But they've got to be able to control the boards and keep Oregon from getting second chance opportunities. And on that first offensive possession, it was a, an offensive foul called against Wendell White. Ume. Loose ball controlled by the running Rebels. Wink Adams back out to Kruger. Oregon will play primarily man to man, although they will go to a matchup now and then. White too far into the basket, couldn't get it. And here's where they're tough. Look at the quickness right there. Couldn't get the drop, though, was Tawan Porter at 5 6. Kruger. Strong follow by Asinge. He could not get the follow. This is Brooks. Tawan Porter at 5'6". I tell you, I love this guy's game. You can't tell me that he doesn't play big with his attitude. Well, after watching him on TV, you know, it's this kind of thing that I usually get. And people say, you don't look that big on TV. Well, <laughs> Tawan Porter didn't look that small on TV either, but he is definitely living up to his nickname throughout this season as Mighty Mouse. Adams. Rebounded. This is Aaron Brooks for the Ducks. And Brooks dropping in the basket for Oregon out to a 4-0 lead over UNLV. And James, that's an example of keeping the lane spread wide to give Porter and Brooks an opportunity to work you off the bounce. Speaking of keeping the lanes wide, I noticed in practice yesterday they put orange cones on the floor on their fast break drill to make certain the guys do maintain spacing as they're running the drills. Ume. Boy, Ume is a story as well in terms of all that he's battled back from to be back at this point, Len. Well, absolutely. Surgery on both knees. Missed most of last year. Has really battled back. Starting to get confidence in his game again. Whenever you have those kind of debilitations, it takes a long time for you to believe that you can play this game again. Well, he's got his confidence back. Ball thrown away. It'll go running Rebels ball. 4-2 ball game in the early going here. Kruger, well-known story, a graduate student who was able to take advantage of a loophole in the rule to come and play as a graduate student for his father, having graduated from Arizona State. Well, it actually wasn't a loophole. It was an actual rule that graduate students with eligibility remaining could transfer without having to sit out without penalty. But obviously, people took advantage of it for athletic reasons, and now the NCAA has repealed that rule, and they will allow graduate students to apply for a waiver and the NCAA needs to investigate whether or not that transfer is for athletic reasons or not and if it's not for athletic reasons then certainly that waiver might be granted Harrison's shot was blocked by Asenge UNLV one of seven from the floor Kruger make it one of eight and those of you expecting to see USC against North Carolina. We will get you to the tip of that game shortly. Well, you talk about defense again. USC surprising a lot of people with the way they play lockdown defense. And you know me, defense is going to win championship. You can hold opponents under 40 percent. You got yourself a good chance. Last basket by Marty Lunen, a big fellow who can knock down the three, Len. And a foul down on the paint. Ernie Kent wanted to travel. Breaking the action, back with more after this. Ernie Kent, as we mentioned in his 10th year, the first African-American head coach in the history of Oregon athletics when he was hired in 97. He underscored the objective for today. Well, the objective is obviously covering the shooters. And let's say it again, shot pressure. And you talk about the pace of this game in four minutes. These teams are combined 
for 15 field goal attempts. So you know they're looking to get it up and get it up in a hurt. Joel Anthony over the back. Joel Anthony, a 6'9 senior left-handed player from Montreal, Canada. Well, I tell you what, he's got an athletic body. Certainly does, but again, the quick shots really not working for UNLV. We're one of nine right now, and you know, obviously that's very poor shooting percentage, and particularly from beyond the arc where they're 0 for 4. You know, I think that a little bit of anxiety is crept in, a little bit of anxiousness for UNLV. They've got to be able to settle down now, and it's really going to happen on the defensive end. Porter, I tell you what, small enough to get in those creases there. From the corner, Taylor, who was simply outstanding in the Pac-10 Tournament Championship game, off the mark there. Here come the Rebels, Kruger at the helm. And that's an example, again, of being able to block off, give Oregon one shot at the basket. You'll be able to get down and get into your offense quickly. Ume looking for Anthony underneath. Well, you see how they've settled down a little bit. The running Rebels after a good defensive sequence. They feel a little more confident right now that they can run their stuff. Dogger 4-3. Joe Dogger, 6'7", sophomore from Riverton, Utah, dropping home the three. Dogger, a good long-range shooter. Also penetrating kicks. You know he's going to spot up. But that's really what uh, Oregon is all about. They'll try to play a little inside out as well. Taylor, nice move, good pass from and to Bryce Taylor, who uh, comes from basketball pedigree. Well, he certainly does. His dad, Brian, tremendous player at Princeton and played professionally in both the ABA and the NBA. Wink Adams for the running Rebels. 9-8 ball game. Now the pace is picking up a little bit. UNLV kind of shaking the nervousness and starting to come out here and play the way they expect to play. From the corner off the mark was Brooks. Again, second possession, one and out for Oregon. Kruger. Kruger off the mark early. He was a number two guard when he was at Arizona State, but having to play a point, he says he's getting readjusted to the responsibilities. Nice block by Joel Anthony. Well, Joel Anthony only averages 18 minutes a game, but guess what? Defensive player of the year in the Mountain West Conference. And the reason is terrific timing. Blocks with both hands, and you see him with the instinct to go to the penetration. And again, we talked about Joel Anthony, 108 blocks, as I said, just averaging 18 minutes a game. That's three blocks in 18 minutes. And good enough to be defensive player of the year in Mountain West. Brooks, Katron, Lunen. Lunen trying to go up strong. Does so. Can't get the roll. Good hustle down low. Fighting for the ball aggressively, and we've got a foul. And JB, Joel Anthony just went to the bench. But one of the problems that UNLV is going to have when he's in the game and he's looking to block every shot, he's out of position to rebound. And we talked about the importance of being able to limit Oregon to just one shot each possession. And he got two quick fouls, so he's on the bench. Catron, strong move to the hoop. Jovan Catron, 6'6", 225. Big fella not only played big, but he played wide. Mm -hmm. Book on him. What we just saw, visual embellishment of that, uses his body well. Very active around the basket. And again, we talk about playing wide. Katron using that big body, and look how nimble he is. Again, nice little move right there. Change of direction. Actually drew some contact. Might have been able to get away with a foul if the officials called it. Well, we got a foul down on this end. His first personal. Darvin again. Joe Darger, an excellent three-point shooter. He's a catch-and-shoot guy, and we've seen that as Kruger will pick up the foul on this end. First personal on Kevin Kruger. 
Well, again, when you look at the guards out there for uh, Oregon, you know, obviously 5'6 to Juan Porter. Aaron Brooks listed at six feet, but, you know, I don't know if that's with the headband and the fro. <laughs> but in the end, I mean, the mismatch comes with Hairston, particularly a guy who's very good at handling the ball, getting where he needs to be and can take you off the bounce. Off the bench for UNLV in the game now, Curtis Terry and Marcus Lawrence. Katron up strong. Yeah, he likes the action down low, physically so. Well, again, Oregon got away with one right there. It looked as though it might have been a double dribble. The official signal that the ball was knocked out of Katron's hands. But UNLV certainly up. 13-11, Oregon Ducks on top of the seven-seater Rebels. Terry. And a little holding action down low. Joe Darger off the bench for UNLV, helping to narrow the gap, a two-point game. And Lynn, both of these teams like the up-tempo, but you think right now it's favoring Oregon. Well, it certainly is. UNLV missing shots 4-14 from the field. And what that's doing is allowing Oregon to get out and get in transition, allowing them to get higher percentage shots. And certainly on the board, Oregon has the advantage 11-7. So until UNLV can start knocking some shots down, maybe getting some easier shots, in this type of pace game, you know, Oregon's going to continue to force the issue. A little token full court pressure there by the Rebels. Terry trying to defend Brooks. Order. In and out. Katron, a fixture underneath the basket with the loose ball. And that, in a nutshell, is the way Oregon wants to play. Put the ball in Brooks's hands. Let him create for himself and others. Good pass. Harrison with the follow. And we told you, and it's going to be a recurring theme. UNLV has got to prevent Oregon from getting second chance opportunities. I mean, obviously easier said than done, but UNLV, as I said, even rebound margin throughout the year. Got to step it up. Active legs being shown by the Ducks. Not of the rare variety. Loose ball controlled by the Ducks. Good thought, bad pass intended for Bryce Taylor. Well, Jovan Catron, 6'6", freshman, averages only three points on the season, but he's making his presence known down low in the paint. And that's the advantage that Oregon has right now. They've got right now a reliable scorer down in the paint that they can go through to and help kind of spread the wealth, so to speak. Once he has more success, UNLV is going to have to adjust. And then perimeter shooters, kind of like we saw in the first game with the success of Horford down low, really opened it up mm -hmm. for Torian Green and vice versa. And at only 6'6", he plays the 5 and the 4, but you see he's got a penchant for that, that physical play down low. Yeah, he'll put some body on you. He's got it to put on you. Nice jumper by Ume. Ume dropping it in. He's got, that's his first three-pointer. And action heading the other way. 15-14 ball game, 9.58 left in the first half. Kruger, rebounded by Darger. Darger has been very active off the bench and effective. He's got eight to lead the running Rebels. Well, did you see that? Four. Boy, I tell you what, I'd like to have him as a teammate. That's lightning right there. Talk about Tawan Porter. But first, Joe Darger right here. Just nice job. Offensive rebound. He really didn't have to do anything but turn around and hold his position. As Oregon failed to put a body on him, normally known as a long-range shooter. Tawan Porter lightning quick and then of course his teammate Malik Harrison is very very familiar with that move for sure. No one serves college sports fans better than CSTV the 24 hour college sports network from CBS Sports to get CSTV go to CSTV.com. Harrison as I was mentioning a teammate of Porter's at Detroit Renaissance High School so he knows all about the blazing quickness and speed of Porter. And when you know a guy can beat people off the bounce at will, you try to get yourself open because he'll also keep your hands full. Good defense on the inside by Harrison. Good rebound by Darger. Darger getting the job done off the bench. He's got 10. He only averages six on the year and as again known as a three-point shooter, 43% from beyond the arc. 
but he's willing to put in the time on the boards. And you know, the book on him is that he is not the most athletic you don't need to be if you're active, aggressive, and playing good heads-up basketball. He's getting it done. Darger has the Rebels out in front by one. The winner here in the nightcap will meet Florida, the top overall seed in the tournament. They'll meet them in the Midwest region final here in St. Louis. Look at the pressure right there. Oregon recognizes UNLV only one turnover. They're starting to really get in a groove with their offense. And Oregon seeking a way to try to get them out of that rhythm. Ah, boy, Brooks looked to have had all ball and uh, good job on his part to maintain his control because it looked good from this angle, second personal on Brooks. You see the job that Darger has done off of the bench compared to the rest of the team. 10 of the 18 points by the running Rebs. And again, look at the denial. Kevin Kruger drawing an awful lot of attention from Tawan Porter. Trying to get the ball out of the hands of the shooters, but Terry couldn't get the drop. Looning ahead to Tawan Porter. Porter hammered from behind, and he'll take a trip to the free throw line. Well, on the other end, Oregon getting the ball out of the hands of the shooters, and once they gain possession, they make sure it gets in the hands of their shooters, and you see Shaw right there with the bump. And it's a big bump when you're a 6'8 and 240 and you're bumping Tawan at 5'6, 160. Well, again, when you have a spread floor and you got guys with the quickness and the explosiveness off the bounce as a Porter or Aaron Brooks, everybody has got to be aware of where they are on the floor. First point of the evening for Porter, who averages 14 on the season. And Darger getting a good hand as he heads to the bench for the running Rebs. As Porter will look to knock down the last of the free throw offerings. And he does. Hammered on a three point shot attempt. He nailed all three at the free throw line. 20 to 18, Oregon. 8 13 left in the first half of play. White penetrating, pulls up for the J. Lunen did not block out White with the rebound. A fresh 35. Ume off the mark. And this is Harrison. But again, when you watch Oregon play defense, they're heeding the words of Coach Ernie Kent. They're challenging shots. Shot pressure, shot pressure, shot pressure. Ducks with the ball out of bounds. Again, the value of having a guy like Marty Loon and ability to handle the ball outside as a big man can draw the big people from UNLV out from under the basket. Katron in his favorite position, battling underneath. Porter with the three to Juan Porter for the Ducks. Again, UNLV not able to corral the rebound despite having a majority of their red shirts in the paint. And we talked about the keys to the game. Oregon cannot get second chance opportunities on a regular basis to UNLV. Wendell White on the penetration. The foul will be called on Lunin. UNLV trailing. 23-18 to Oregon. 7-16 left in the first half of play. And UNLV is yet to get their two big scorers. Wendell White and Wink Adams on track. Collectively, they're one of six from the field. Out of, uh, White with the ball right there. It's a block. Good block. Harrison, excellent defense on Wendell White. Harrison, nice pass to Catron. Smart move, didn't have it. Back out to Porter. Porter off the mark. Little brickwork there on the backboard. Ume. Asenge with the rebound for the running Rebs. Collected himself nicely, but couldn't get the drop. Here come the Ducks. And a walk. 
Well, you take a look at the comparisons we just spoke about Adams and White, who've pretty much been the leaders offensively, and right now, nearly non existent is their offensive capability. Wink Adams with a three, and Wendell White still with a donut. And the running Rebs not hitting it from the floor at all. Seven of 26 from the floor. Wink to Kruger. Kruger with a three. First basket of the game for Kruger and that of the three variety. Rebs down by two. 6-10 left in the first half of play. And Bryce Taylor was all over Kevin Kruger. And when Kruger made that difficult shot with a hand in his face, all Taylor could do was just shake his head. Mm -hmm. Had that happen before, just got to keep going. Be like a defensive back, short memory. Taylor. <laughs> Rebounded by Wink Adams, leading the break. Coast to coast, can get it. Asinge with the follow and the foul. Gaston Asinge. And you see, JB, when I talked about being able to command the boards and not give up second chance opportunities, what that does is allows UNLV to get out and run their break. You know, this is a team that likes to get out and run. They average 75 points a game. And certainly they will shoot the three in transition as well. But their game doesn't really kick in the gear until they're able to get out and push. A send game missing the first end of the free throw. Aaron Brooks in for Harrison. This is the first free throw trip, if you will, for UNLV. And a send game not getting the second. You take a look at Aaron Brooks. He begins the game with the headband, but. Right now, for some reason, it's off. Luna. Rebounded by Adams. Wink Adams doing a nice job in the other phases of the game. Couldn't get by Brooks and loses the handle. Taylor. And an offensive foul called on Bryce Taylor. Well, Gaston Asinge does a nice job of holding his ground. Bryce Taylor thinks he's got a lane, and Asinge who was guarding a guy in the post steps up to penetration like all good frontline defenders need to do. And Bryce Taylor totally out of control on that one. Second personal on Bryce Taylor, both offensive fouls. And look at the help right there out of this matchup zone. Good look. Only inside to White. White goes up strong. The young man out of Los Angeles, California, with the hit on the body, but good strong move. Well, Kevin Kruger does a nice job. Actually, it wasn't Kevin Kruger. I thought it was Michael Ume does a nice job of threading, threading the needle. And when you have spaces, if you can spread out the matchup, you almost treat it like a man-to-man. -man. And that time, just White just snuck down on the baseline and made himself available. Wendell White, first team all conference. And he's battled some injuries as well, Len, to get to the point of playing as well. And again, a first team all conference recognition. Well, you see the mouthpiece that he's wearing, which most players should wear anyway, but he suffered a fractured jaw back on February 10 and actually has been wearing braces. He showed us yesterday as he lifted his top lip and his braces all around there to kind of keep that jaw in place and he's also got a bruised rib and he's wearing a protective device kind of like a flak jacket now I had a chance to feel it I don't know if it's going to give him that much protection but if it makes him feel good cool might be more of a psychological boost in terms of that flak jacket as you mentioned well you take a look there and that padding around should give him some protection from the elbows and the bumps and bruises that might occur there but it's kind of thin and it necessarily has to be because you don't want to add extra weight Particularly in this game. This is maybe as rough as football at times, but it's not football. Even though JV is announcing. And I would think most <laughs> football players would want to disagree. I hear you, Lynn. <laughs> 429 left in the first half of play. Rebs on top by one over the Ducks of Oregon. That was my obligatory gridiron announcement. And I you would, know what? Much appreciated. Reference, I wouldn't say anymore. Much appreciated. <laughs> White missing 
the kiss off the glass. Brooks ahead to Porter. Lightning quick up the floor, nailing the three. For a quick release. I guess at 5-6, you need it. The second game. Do they count it? They count it. Gaston Esenge with a good, strong move and the basket. Well, UNLV right back at you after the bucket right here by Tawan Porter. UNLV certainly wants to push the ball up the floor. Big guys running for UNLV. Marty Lunen out of the game. Adams on in the game. And Gaston Esenge recognized an opportunity. One of the underappreciated players on the team. And again, a lot of that, as Lynn, you mentioned before, because Joel Anthony is a backup so strong as a defensive player of the year, but he gets it done as well. Well, I like the way Jovan Kahn can handle that rock. He penetrated and kicked it. You don't normally see a guy that big with that capability. I'm loving Tawan Porter, 5'6", all over the floor, playing with all kinds of confidence and not being hurt despite being diminutive on the defensive end. Well, playing at that size, you know where to pick your spots. And there's one of them like right this. there. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> oh. That's the spot. It's good. One point ball game here in St. Louis. 320 left in the first half. Oregon, the number three seed on top of UNLV, the number seven seed. Order. Lightning quick out there, and Len, I know you played with some pretty fast guards in your day. How does he compare? Well, I mean, with his size, I mean, he obviously is is blazing quick, and his size kind of uh, kind of exaggerates that quickness a little bit. But I haven't seen many guys with that kind of quick release. On the other end, though, Kevin Kruger starting to find his range, and you know, hopefully exploit his size advantage. Kruger at 6'2", and he's got Tawan Porter playing him. Porter, we mentioned before, 5'6". Oh, Porter, man. My gosh. That had icicles on it when it came down. And he points a finger at Ume saying, hey, I can play this as well. Or oh, either that or you want some of this also. That's <laughs> scoring 16 of... Actually, the last 16 Oregon Port points have been scored by Tawan Porter. Love his moxie. Strong rebound by Hairston. And should we be surprised? This is a young man, Tawan Porter, who started his collegiate career off with 93 points in the first three games that he played. An average of 31 points a game. That's because no one has seen anything like that. There's another killer crossover right there. Good job by UNLV kind of cover up the lane. 17 points in the last six minutes. Turnover. This is Kruger looking up court. Wink Adams too hard off the glass. Katron there to clean up. And again, Malik Harrison doing a nice job on the perimeter. Again, bigger guys getting down and playing the smaller guys, lowering their center of gravity, being able to move their feet. Harrison. From the corner. Well, a number of these duck players have had to deal with injuries, including Malik Harrison, who dealt with groin, heel, and abdominal injuries. Still operating at only about 70%, but he nailed that three from the corner. Kruger looking to answer back in and out. Good hustle by Malik Harrison that kept it loose. Katron got the rebound ahead to Brooks. Six-point lead by the Ducks. 117 left in the first half of play. Brooks pull up Jay short. Rebounded by Kruger. Ahead to White. Touchdown. Well, again, that was the fault of Aaron Brooks primarily. The quick shot never really had the basket protected. If Brooks is going to go and take that quick shot, he's got to be sure that Tawan Porter or somebody else is back. He was the last line of defense on that last possession. Fifteen on the shot clock. Forty on the game clock. Hairston, free for the jump. In and out. Rebounded by Katron. Passes off to Zahn. Blocked by 
Asenge. Katron a little too unselfish right there. He's going to take it himself. You're right. And Asenge misses the layup. Timeout called by Ernie Kent. These are the points and times when coaches have to recognize their impact on young men. We'll see the impact on Adam Zahn when he gets back in the ballgame. 18 seconds left in regulation. Tawan Porter. Scoreless the first 11 and a half minutes. 17 points the last eight minutes by TP. Look at the help that he draws. Two seconds. Luna. Rebounded by Asenge. So that's the end of the first half with the score. Oregon 37, UNLV 33. Tawan Porter, Lunen, Harrison, Bryce Taylor, and Aaron Brooks. The five in white for the Ducks of Oregon. Nice, nice bounce oh. pass. Good move by Bryce Taylor. Boy, changing in the air, the athleticism of Bryce Taylor. Very underrated and underappreciated. And he had the game of his life in the Pac-10 tournament. Reminiscent of his dad on that move. Off the mark was Michael Ume for the running Rebs. Here come the Ducks. This is Aaron Brooks. To Juan Porter. And it's out of bounds. It will come back. Oregon ball. You can take a look at the turnover situation right there. That's what's keeping UNLV in this ball game. Off of Oregon's eight turnovers, UNLV has gotten 11 points off the turnover, so they're trying to convert the opportunities given to them, but just can't put the ball in the basket. Ended the half shooting about 32%. UNLV's got to get the ball in the hands of their top scorers, White and Adams. Porter is on fire. Didn't score a point the first 11 and a half minutes in the first half at 17. He's now got 20 on the evening. He averages 14. And you see how much room he's given. You got to respect his quickness and his ability to blow by you. And that gives him all the room he needs. Brooks bringing it up for the Ducks. Bryce can penetrate. Lunen can shoot it from the three. A little inside out, but the roles are reversed. Point guard kicks it out to the big man for the three. UNLV with a timeout. UNLV has to respect that quickness. They lay off him, and all you need to do is give him a sliver of daylight. On the other side, Lynn, and you brought the point up, Darger. 10 points off the bench for UNLV in the first half. No fouls. I have no idea why he's not back in the action. Especially since UNLV struggling to score, although that's a good play right there. Nice pass by White. Darger was four for four from the field. 10 points in eight minutes in the first half, and he can't get any daylight. Well, it was an eight nothing run to start action here in the second half for Oregon. Nice job defensively there by Adams. <laughs> More than a job defensively. The conversion right there. Acrobatic shot by Wink Adams. And that's certainly something that UNLV wants to see. First on the steal. Big fella should never be trying to make plays. And then you take a look there. The continuation by Wink Adams. And he certainly needs to help this team start to get off. You take a look at the field goal percentage. A lot of that has to do with the Oregon defense, although UNLV has gotten some open looks, just not able to put it down. Foul called on Tawan Porter. That's his second. 45-38, Oregon on top. Just underway here in the second half. Porter, Brooks, Taylor, Lunen, and Catron. Make that Harrison for the Ducks. You look at this Lunen. You look at the spread floor right there. Presents an awful lot of driving lanes for Oregon to penetrate, and then when the help steps up, shooters are in place, just like Lunen was. Down the other end we go. We'll see if Oregon can add to its three-point shots behind the arc. They've got three this half. And Florida has already advanced to the Midwest Regional Final here 
awaiting the winner in this contest. And we talk about the pace of these two teams and the number of shots they want to get up. Obviously, Florida had to really adjust in playing against Butler and adjust that they did. But they certainly will see both of these teams as a welcome sight, giving them a chance to get up and down. Taylor stripped, taking it to the basket. Kruger for three. Lunen ahead to Brooks. And a foul will be called on Kevin Kruger for UNLV. But right now, Oregon's quickness is just really digging a deep hole for UNLV. Not able to match, particularly in transition. Finally, we see Darger about to come back in for UNLV. Brooks on the first offering. White and Asenge will take a seat on the bench as Joel Anthony and Darger are back in. And a little offense and defense. Joel Anthony, tremendous shot blocker, can anchor that lane. And with the driving lanes being wide open and Oregon willing to take advantage of it, Anthony certainly stands as an obstacle for layups. And Darger, we mentioned, perfect from the field in the first half, 10 points in eight minutes. Strangely absent at a time when UNLV was having trouble putting points on the board. Very quiet evening for uh, Aaron Brooks, the uh, leading scorer in the Pac-10. He has only three points on the evening. Now he has four, averaging 18 as the leading scorer on this squad. But he's not allowing that to bother him. He's still distributing the ball nicely. And to embellish that point, four assists specifically. Adams. Porter with the rebound. Porter with the shot. Porter with the three. Hey, I'll tell you what. In transition, you get a guy with that kind of speed bearing down on you. You got to be on your heels. He knows it. And we said explosive set of guards. Aaron Brooks may not be having the offensive night that he normally is accustomed to, but Juwan Porter is making up for it and then some. Love Porter's attitude. Brooks to Taylor. To Porter with the hot hand. Juwan Porter just having the game of his life. Scoring 23 points in the last 12 and change, including the first half. And he has just been remarkable in his ability to get himself free in transition, off the bounce at 5'6" finding enough airspace to be able to bury threes. UNLV does have the juice to be able to come back, though, Len. Well, they certainly have. I mean, they're uh, among the top leaders in overall wins in the country, and they've had the most wins for a Mountain West team in the eight-year history of that conference with 30 wins. So this is a team that you don't necessarily take lightly and obviously has had the ability to come back from deficits. But they've got to find some offense. White and Adams just not on top of their game. And they won't get it like that with that turnover going to the Oregon Ducks. Relive all of the great moments in game highlights or replay any game from the NCAA tournament with NCAA March Madness On Demand. It's free at NCAAsports.com slash M-M-O-D. And everybody should like free. We like free. It sounds good. No doubt about it. Taylor to Harrison. Back to Brooks. See, I think Aaron Brooks right now is pressing a little bit. He's got to realize that right now they don't need his offense. He had a nice catch and shoot opportunity, and he passed it up to put it on the floor. He's one of six from the field. But again, he's got four assists, playing a pretty decent floor game. Doesn't need to force the shot. You know, if there was any concern about Tawan Porter and his defense, well, I tell you what, nothing is showing this evening as you take a look at the foul out high by Taylor. That'll be his third. It's Tawan Porter that was concerned about his diminutive size, and the only thing he had to work on was being able to see man and ball. He was such a ball-hawking defensive player, he was focused only on his man early in the season. Well, I'll tell you, Kevin Kruger took advantage just a couple of times in the first half 
on a catch and suit situ situation where he could elevate over Porter, but Kruger hasn't gotten that many opportunities. Look at that save right there. Fresh 35 for the Rams. Darger has it slapped away by Harrison. Can Darger get back on track as he was in the first half? Kruger, good drive to the basket by Kevin Kruger as he hit the floor pretty hard. Three for nine is Kruger. He's got nine points on the evening. 53-40, 13-point lead by the Ducks. 13-37 left in regulation. Curtis Terry defending Aaron Brooks. Curtis Terry, of course, the son of Pedigree as well. Certainly is. He and Jason Terry are the Dallas Mavs, are brothers. And you, know, you talk about having a storybook season. Three on the shot clock. <laughs> Never touched not the, hit the rim. Yep. Mm -hmm. So it'll go the other way to the Rabs. Pac-10 trying to show off a little bit. Eight and three in this tournament. Obviously a lot of close games in the six regional semifinals. I think the NCAA tournament selection committee can pat themselves on the back with tremendous job of seeding. You know, we're seeing a, an awful lot of close games, closely fought games. And the uh, men's basketball tournament chair here this evening taking in the action and certainly with a reason to smile. Gary Walters, AD at Princeton. In fact, that school was uh, in the mix for your services back in the day. <laughs> Long time ago. Strong rebound by Hairston for the Ducks. Hairston with 10 rebounds on the evening. I mean, Trying to take a page out of Tawan Porter's book. Back behind the dribble, behind the back dribble there. He knew he didn't have the quick. Look at the change of pace there. UNLV certainly respecting Porter as they continue to backpedal, keep him out of the lane. Lunen foul going to the basket. Lunen, Catron, Brooks, Harrison, and Porter the five in white for the Ducks. And Lunen, everybody's trying to take a page from Porter. Strong move by Harrison. Boy, Malik Harrison at 6'6. Six, six. You know, you think about him as possibly a guard, but he's showing combo skills, boy, with the strength inside as well as the ball handling and perimeter game. But right here, on the pass from Brooks, Harrison decides, well, instead of settling for the five-footer, let me see what I can do inside in a strong finish. That power two-handed dribble to go up strong there. Saw the opening the first time, and you saw it coming as well. Good move also on the defensive end as he deflected that ball. 25 on the shot clock for the Rebs. And speaking on the defensive end, Oregon doing a terrific job on the three top scorers for UNLV. 7 of 27 between White Adams and Kruger. And let's go back to the pregame pep talk by Ernie Kent. His squad executing Porter again. Man, you can just feel the air of anticipation when Porter has the ball and is about to raise up. There's a little hum of folks looking for something great to happen, and Porter has not disappointed. Foul on the Ducks, but the Ducks swimming nicely. On top by 18 with 11.37 left in regulation. Let's see what the Rebs can do to eat into this deficit. Well, one thing they're going to have to do is they're going to have to find an answer for Tawan Porter because he scored nine here in the second half. And defensively, Oregon has done a terrific job continuing to shut down White and Adams. Again, you look at the tail of the two halves, right? Again, UNLV 0 for 7 from beyond the arc. That's one of the areas where they excel. And certainly, Oregon really finding the range now offensively. And again, led by Tawan Porter. Oregon really able to get out in transition, push the ball. You look at UNLV right now, they recognize They've got to shake the ball loose from Oregon, create some more turnovers, get some easy opportunities. Well, they better be pretty frenetic about the defense to make that happen, Lynn. Wrong place to pick up the ball right there. Wrong place to give it to Tawan Porter at 5-6, surrounded by 6-5 and 6-8. Curtis Terry and Gaston Essingay 
You never want to give it in the short corner against a trap because you can't go backcourt. You got the sideline as an extra defender. Wendell White trying to operate on Harrison. Looked like he got fouled right there. Mm -hmm. No call, but maybe Harrison got a piece of the ball. Well, you know what? Came up short. This young man, Joel Anthony, has such an upside. He is a senior, though, but boy, he's got some talent. But UNLV expending all kinds of energy trying to get back in this ball game. You take a look at that full court pressure on the chase. And this is what you would expect to try to change the tempo. But between Brooks and Porter with their quickness, it's easier said than done to try to turn Oregon over at this point in time. Yeah, but you know what? You got to give it effort there, right? Can't concede at this point. 10 37 left in regulation. Oregon on top by 15. Brooks will stay here under the basket for the foul and it will go against Hairston. Well, again, we talk about Mighty Mouse to Juan Porter saving the day. Seven three-point field goals, and that's an Edward Jones Dome record. And he has just lit it up. And again, utilizing his quickness to create space. All he needs to do is just show that he's going to the basket. UNLV backs up, and it's all the space the five, six marksman needs. The biggest man on the court tonight at five, six is Tawan Porter. This is Terry from the corner. That's Strong a good nickname. rebound. Hmm? Little big man. Hey, without a doubt. And doing it big fashion. Fresh 35 for the Rebs. Terry slicing. Strong rebound by Anthony. A foul stay down at this action, and it will be on Javon Catron. Well, again, you look at the shining moments for Florida, Al Horford, and Torian Green. Work the inside outside combination for Florida to perfection and Green and Hebert how about Jeff Green with the winning shot with maybe just a couple of seconds or less left on the clock against Vanderbilt to seal the win for Georgetown player of the year in the Big East continues to come up big who's still developing nice left handed jump hook by Joel Anthony we talk about Jeff Green still developing man I don't know how much better he can get Oh, yeah, believe me, he's, he's really developing. 13-point deficit now, and Porter off the mark, but he gets the rebound, a fresh 35 for the Ducks. And Big John Thompson said he'd like to see just a bit more basketball arrogance from Jeff Green as he continues to improve. And that last foul was called on White, his second. White with the loose ball. This is Curtis Terry. The nine minutes approximately left to go. And down 13, UNLV's got to recognize that they're still in this ball game within striking distance. They need to hit some shots, though, only 31% from the field. Well, plenty of time to get it done. And a good job. Goodness, Anthony, he's been the answer off the bench, and UNLV has trimmed it now to 11. 7 0 run, 6 by Joel Anthony. It was Gargar in the first half, Anthony in the second half. Porter, and Porter has pulled a bit. Well, UNLV's forcing him inside the three point arc, it makes it a little more difficult for a 5 6 guy. He's not real adept at throwing those teardrops down, at least not in this game. And if I'm UNLV, that's what I want. I don't want Tawan Porter lurking behind the three-point line. I want him to put it on the floor and force him inside that arc. On the other hand, UNLV forcing a couple turnovers now, seemingly trying to get their offense kicked in the gear. Nice job of chipping away at the Oregon Duck lead. Curtis Terry hammered. And obviously Arizona Stanford Watching this one on TV in all probability. And Oregon trying to hold on to this lead up by 11. And they could present the possibility if Pac-10 continues to win out of three Pac-10 teams in the final four. And that's getting ahead of ourselves, but the potential is there. Wendell White cuts it to nine with that slam.
as we indicated, UNLV has some juice on a 9-0 run right now. Well, two of the big guns for Oregon haven't really got on track, and that's Bryce Taylor and Aaron Brooks. And they need to start doing some stuff as if on cue, Aaron Brooks recognizes that they need a little more diversity on offense, that Tawan Porter can't carry it by himself. Sixth point of the evening for Brooks. He averages 18. Again, for a team that loves to get up and down, UNLV exhibiting some patience, recognizing that, you know, they're going to have to play some relatively flawless offensive basketball and some tight D to get within striking distance here. Terry, 4-3, in and out. And a foul is going to be called on Bryce Taylor pushing Corey Bailey. Taylor, fourth foul. He'll take a seat on the benches. Javon Catron comes back in for the Ducks. 60-49, 11 point lead by the Ducks. 6.59 left in regulation. This is Corey Bailey, a 6'5 junior at the line. Rebounded by Catron. This is what I was talking about looking for from UNLV. Some aggressiveness on the defensive end just to pick up the activity. Porter, can he find a range? Yes. You talk about freezing a guy in his footsteps. Curtis Terry didn't know what to do when Porter had the ball. Eight of 11 from three land. 29 points for Porter. Career high is 38. Stepping on the out of bounds line, it'll go the other way. Well, just when you thought UNLV had gotten themselves on track, had much more rhythm on the offensive end, it takes a guy like Tawan Porter to kind of upset that rhythm. He's done that all evening long as Wink Adams comes in replacing Corey Bailey. And what happened was after Porter hits that shot, UNLV, whereas they were patient last several possessions and got something out of it, that time it seemed to rush the offense. And again, not what they need at this point in time. They need to get quick shots but not be rushed. Is he feeling it? Off the mark was Porter. Rebounded by White. Kruger pushing it up for the Rebs. Trying to get by Lunin. The winner here advances to meet Florida. Hairston comes up with the loose ball for the Ducks. 63-49, 5-49 left in regulation. Again, another trip for UNLV. Too much in a hurry right now. They got to get quality shots. Only one turnover in the first half, six in the second half. A lot of that has to do with the fact that they've been in too much of a hurry. And it's not so much that Oregon is capitalizing and points off those turnovers, but it's just the lost opportunities, lost possessions for UNLV. Porter getting a uh, much needed rest on the bench. Harrison picks up the slack for his teammate. And we talked about the versatility of a Malik Harrison. In fact, all of the frontline guys for Oregon who can shoot it outside, put it on the floor, they can also post you up. Oregon, 13 of 22 from three point land. Kruger with a good shot. And that makes the starting five for UNLV 13 of 43 from the field. Not exactly the way Lon Kruger wanted to see it done. Lunen shot in and out. Ball off of Harrison. It'll go to the running Rebs. Ernie Kent's squad doing an outstanding job. Kent, the 2002 Pac-10 Coach of the Year, keeping on top of his squad, keeping him active. Ume for three. Wendell White, strong rebound. Good follow by Wendell White. White with nine points. He averages 15, 421 left in regulation. 13 point lead by Oregon. And UNLV would love to see more Wendell on the window <laughs> going after those shots. He's been relatively quiet. 
Well, the Ducks have done a nice job defensively, for sure. Brooks wisely taking some time off the clock as well as the rest of the Ducks. Three on the shot clock, needs to go up now. Brooks gets it off in time, doesn't hit the rim, so it'll go running revs. Joe Darger do a job in the first half off the bench. Joel Anthony has tried, but that man there, Porter, has been the man all night long. Well, he has been just unconscious from beyond the arc, eight of 12. And as Oregon goes into a little matchup zone right here, looking to slow the thought process as well as the rhythm of UNLV on the offensive end. You just see the havoc that a 5'6 guy with that kind of quickness can create, and especially when you can fill it up. Porter's eight threes has tied a record for a regional game. His next one, he'll be in the record books all by himself. He's got 315, 314 to get it done within. 15 on the shot clock. But I think right now what Oregon wants to do is spread the floor. And while they don't want to lose their aggressiveness to the basket, they certainly want to be very patient now. Use some clock. Katron, where he likes it. What's the call? It's travel, turnover, travel, got it. Ernie Kent squad. Ernie Kent's done a nice job. He's really kept his guys pumped up. And Lynn, I like the point that you made earlier in terms of how he got on his guy, but in an encouraging fashion. And it's paid dividends. The style has worked very nicely. Kruger. Harrison. Harrison has been there all night long with a good all around game for Malik Harrison. When you talk about Ernie Kent, you know, you don't win the Pac 10 tournament, defeat three different top 10 teams throughout the year, and get to the best record in school history since 1939 where Oregon finished 29 and 5 and won the first NCAA championship. You know, you don't get there without superior coaching skills. Well, it's amazing there was even talk that he was in trouble at one point this year. And if Lon Kruger were to do an autopsy of this game, he'd recognize that, you know, they were living and ultimately perished by the three. First half, six of 17. Second half, They've yet to make a three-point field goal with 11 tries. And again, the inability to get the ball inside, the inability of Wendell White to get himself free and to be able to connect four of 11 from the field. You know, those things obviously led to the ultimate demise of UNLV if this lead holds. Brooks knocks the ball loose to get it back for the Ducks. 2.27 left in regulation, and Joel Anthony, nice job off the bench. Good pass ahead to Kruger. Smart move by Porter not to foul him. 11-point lead and a foul will be on Kevin Kruger. Pushing foul on Marty Lunen. Third on Kruger. And only the 16 foul, so Oregon not yet in the penalty. Kruger fouled in the act of shooting. Well, you don't want to go anywhere just yet. Mm -hmm. UNLV extending the defense in Oregon, complicit in just being very, very sloppy with the ball. 17 turnovers by Oregon in this game. This is a team that normally only turns it over 12 times a game. Kruger with his 14th point of the evening and a timeout called by Ernie Kent. Well, at this point in time, what UNLV has to do, they're going to extend their defense full court, uh, provided that Kruger makes these free throws. And they're going to try for one steal, and then I look for them to foul to try to extend this game. Kruger bangs home the free throw. You know, you look for one trap to try to shake it loose, and then you got a foul. Luna, double team, dribbles out of the double team. Good pass out by Taylor. This is Brooks, fouled by Joel Anthony. Joel Anthony is quite the athlete. Boy, did he motor up and down that court. Absolutely, he was on the baseline on the double team and still got down quick enough to be able to commit the foul. 
And again, UNLV wants to extend this game. Now, you know, that's a that's a tall order. Oregon 76% as a team on the year from the free throw line. Aaron Brooks, 84. Brooks cashes home the first one. Back to a 10-point lead. Oregon perfect from the free throw line thus far. And when you look out there on the floor, the one guy you want to go after is Malik Hairston. He's only 57%. But he's probably running as far away from the ball as he can get. Under two to play. 156. Kruger. Ume with the rebound. Back up for the shot. The follow by Ume is good. Again, here we go with 146 left. One quick trap and then a foul. Up, well, not even a quick trap. They're gonna foul right away. Nine point game. Oregon on top. Lon Kruger trying to make all the right moves here down the stretch. Four fouls on Kruger. Not that one, but the sun. And we talked about again Malik Harrison Harrison and that's the guy that they're going to go after. And despite on the season being a 51 percent free throw shooter drops in the first free throw 13 points 11 rebounds solid all around game for Malik Harrison. And the former McDonald's All-American drops in the second free throw 70 59 140. Left in regulation, Oregon on top. The three seed trying to hold on. Kruger gets the rebound, back out. Rougeau in the game. And the slam by Joel Anthony. Nice dish for the slam from Ume. And Marty Lunen has to slap himself once again here on the nice penetration and dish. You don't even get near Joel Anthony. You know, you don't want UNLV putting points on the board with no time elapsing. And Lunan's surprised, but you got too close. I'm liking the fight that I'm seeing displayed by the running Rebs. This is Joel Anthony at the free throw line, the lefty. Unfortunately, maybe too little too late. May well be, but again, you like to see it. Adams got away with a little push off Ome. down there. With three! May not be too little too late. You know, Lennon, as we're talking about this, as we look at the game reset with Oregon with two timeouts, bonus in the free throw situation, it was 58 46 with 11 and a half to go. Since then, 24 to 12 in rebounds, 58 40. Uh, Marty Aronoff getting me straight on the, uh, the, the handwriting here. Well, it was an 18 point lead. By Oregon, with 11 and a half to go, and UNLV has come back hard. Brooks, good ball handling. They're going to take time off the clock. 104 left, and Taylor is fouled. We talked about UNLV coming back hard, and a lot of it had to do with being able to get some more production out of some guys other than Adams and White and Michael Lume and Kevin Kruger have stepped up a bit. But in the end, it's also about Oregon playing a little too nonchalant and not really having their heads in it. I talked about a couple of the turnovers. I talked about Marty Lunen with the foul on Joel Anthony, who had a straight out knockdown flush and fouled him and allowed at least another opportunity to put points on the board without time elapsing. You've got to have your head in it. And now you start looking at the free throw situation. Extending the game, a good idea for the running Rebs. That's the two possession ball game. First miss at the free throw line for the Ducks. Well, again, it's the extended defense. Comes some of the lack of physical play by Oregon, creating turnovers that UNLV can capitalize on. And then UNLV went back to basics, getting points in the paint, 26 in this half, to climb back. And Porter is fouled by Wink Adams. 41 seconds left in regulation. Oregon nursing a four point lead. And Kruger, because he's got four fouls, being substituted by his dad on the offensive end, not putting him in danger on the defensive end. Well, Tuan Porter, 92% free throw shooter. 
And even if he makes these, he's been three for three perfect so far. It's still a two possession ball game. Porter has had an outstanding game, 30 points on the evening, going for 31, career high of 38. In and out, rebounded by Ume. 38 seconds left. Gardner for three. Rebounded by Porter, the smallest man on the floor, and he's fouled. Well, prior to that shot, Joe Darger two for two from beyond the arc. And a good idea by UNLV. And the shot was available. It was wide open, and he had a guy who hadn't missed, albeit it was only the third one he had taken. The young man from Detroit's Renaissance High has played some excellent basketball this evening. And of course, as you've already indicated, nicknamed Mighty Mouse dropping in yet another one. And we'll say it again, stepping up to the line, coming to save the day. And UNLV on the other end, as I said, a lot of people might think, well, why didn't you take the quick through two? They would have needed a three anyway, regardless, at some point. And now it's 73, 66, there. 26 seconds left, Lynn. Wink misses. Lunan with the rebound. Anthony over the back with the foul. So Lunan will be at the free throw line. Marty Lunan on the season, a 79% free throw shooter. You see Ernie Kent right there, last minute instructions. A lot of it is this game's not over till you hear that buzzer. Keep your heads in it. And I don't ever think that um, Ernie Kent ever thought it was over. Lunan. First time tonight at the line. Well, the coach never thought it was over, but you saw his kids had a tendency to relax. Mm -hmm. And all it needed was just a little bit of an opening for UNLV, playing on pride, if nothing else, to fight to get back into this ball game and make it a ball game. Lunan misses both. Anthony with the rebound. 17 left. Ume for three. 73-69, Oregon. And Porter fouled again by Ume. And down the stretch, let's remember, Juan Porter's a freshman. You know, this is not a grizzled vet. This is a young man at 5'6 that has come in in this regional semifinal to absolutely dominate this basketball game. Playing like a grizzled vet. 33 points. Oregon and NCAA record. Darger. Three for UNLV. A two point game with 3.2 remaining. Not over yet. Almost got the steal. And Taylor, Bryce Taylor, fouled by Darger with nine tenths of a second remaining. And JB, who would have thought? When UNLV was down 18, that they would have been able to make it a two-point game with nine-tenths of a second left. You got to tip your hat to Long Kruger and his guys. They didn't give up. You know, they recognized a sense of urgency. They went back to fundamentals, getting the ball inside, and stopped taking wayward threes. And they almost pulled it off. And I'll say that they have pulled it off if Bryce Taylor <laughs> makes this. Next free throw to make it a two possession ball game. Taylor with both free throws, making it a four point bulge. 